Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we've got a large group. We got the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. The technician, the garrulous, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. Getting excited for boot camp. I think uh, by the time this comes out, boot camp will be in just a couple of days. That's right. That's right. Bearland Aaron. How are you, Bearland? I'm doing well. Thanks. Good to see you. We've got the breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. The Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing very well. Glad to be here. Good to see you. Good to see you. And then, of course, I love it when you call me Big Papa, the Big Papa himself, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm doing so well, Mark. So well. And of course, last but not least, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Mark, Todd. I'm great. How are you? I'm great because you know what? We're taking flight school and we're compressing it into three magical days, May 17th, May 18th, May 19th. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School Live. Be with Scott in the room. Be with Tate in the room. Get trained in three days. Do a deal in three days. You'll be mailing. You'll be marketing. You'll be up and running in three days freaking days i'm really Mark, sorry about can I, can i tell you like can i tell you what's planned yes all right here we go don't friday. give too much away scott don't give too much away friday we're showing up we're in the room we're talking about county research bam we're researching the county right off the bat we're choosing a county we're getting the list we have our magic ways of getting lists and getting them fast we're getting lists. You're using the land geek knowledge to like slice through that. You're getting a list. By noon, noon on day number one, guess what? You're mailing an LG pass. Well, maybe not noon, maybe a little past noon, maybe just after lunch. You're mailing in LG pass. You're using lob. You're all for letters through LG pass. They're going out that same day. Guess what? We then transition quickly into due diligence. Bam. You're going to learn everything you need to know about due diligence. Boom. You're going to get that solid. The next day, Saturday, you're coming back. Guess what we're doing, Mark? We're, we're doing, doing marketing. Marketing, man. We're punching out ads. We're getting them out there. And then you know what we're doing? Then, hopefully, because I believe that Flight School Live includes a property. So, you're going to have a property to sell. We're hoping that you get the sale on Saturday and then Saturday afternoon, we're talking about building a VA team. We're talking about automation. We're talking about uh, on Sunday, we're talking about um, financial management, capital intensive business. And then finally on Sunday, we're talking about how my entire business is laid out and we leave Sunday by noon. And you know what? It's not over with yet because then you're gonna have follow-up calls with land geek coaches to make sure that you continue to, to execute on what you, you uh, learned. That's I, fast. I, I love it. Scott Ball, I got questions. How do I learn more? Mark, you need to schedule a call at thelanegeek.com slash training with either uh, Zeno or myself, and we can tell you all about it. All right. Well, get on that, folks, because the virtual class is starting up uh, next month, but that's 14 weeks. But who wants to wait 14 weeks? Plus it's virtual. Don't you want to be in the room? Don't you want to like actually go up to Tate and be like, what's up big Papa? Nothing better. That's <laughs> worth it alone. So learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training. But what Scott said there was really important because on Saturday, we don't want to build a job for ourselves. We want to build a business, right? And to build a business, we have to have a team. We can't do everything ourselves. Now, in the beginning, sure, the cheapest person you could hire is yourself. But at some point in time, you're going to need to start 
building your team and outsourcing. The question, Bearland Aaron, what is the question? What's the best way to do this, right? What do you think? Right. Um, I was having a discussion with uh, somebody the other day and we were talking about it. And when I started in the business, uh, you know, kind of the, the way you did it was you, um, you found some VAs um, through various sources and you maybe made videos for them. You made, maybe made some instruction sets for them. You trained them up and it took quite a while depending on what the job is. Um, but you trained them exactly how you wanted for your business and it was good. However, since then, um, there's been some changes in the industry. Some businesses have come up, including the Land Geek VAs, uh, as well as maybe some other companies, where they have ready-made VAs that all you have to do is tell them what you want. They're already um, knowledgeable in the real estate business in our specific niche, and they do the work for you. So, you know, is it worth it to still train them how you want? Or is it a better use of your time to just have a service do it for you? That's the question I bring forth today. I think it's an interesting question. Now, the, the other company out there, and I've never heard um, a bad word about them, so I'm assuming they're very good, is landmasters.us. Now, of course, we have our own trained Land Geek VAs that are trained on our method. I'm not exactly sure what Landmasters does, but these are philippine based vas that understand and know our business and so the question scott bossman is do you rent or do you buy do you do you have your own person dedicated that you work with or do you just pay a little bit of a premium and save yourself the time and the headache of actually training yeah, it's a good question. I think it depends on the service. Uh, it may depend on the individual, but looking back at my experience, uh, I would have paid an arm and a leg for a Land Geek due diligence VA um, to present to me a very thorough due diligence report where I didn't have to go into the GIS website and get the GPS coordinates and go to the assessor website and get the zoning information and go to the treasurer website or call the treasurer to get back taxes. So in, in my opinion, the Land Geek VA's for due diligence, uh, they're, they're, gonna, they're going to contribute to your velocity in this business and getting more done more quickly. Uh, and they're very reliable. So that, that service, in my opinion, is very reliable. And uh, the, we have a deal right now in flight school where you get uh, 10 free deals or 20 free deals, depending on you know, what, what uh, flight school package you go with. Um, if, if you get those 10 deals and aren't satisfied, and need to modify or tweak, you go ahead and modify or tweak and, and maybe train your own VA. Um, but that service for me has been very valuable in leveraging my time. As far as some of the other services go, I'm not familiar with uh, any of the other, um, uh, the other, uh, the Landmasters program that you, you had uh, talked about. I know that uh, for me, it's been a lot of training uh, of intake managers and people helping with marketing. Uh, and, uh, things, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to find different VAs with different strengths and capabilities as well. So, uh, it all comes down to what you need, what they're capable of and trying to match it. All right, Eric Peterson, how about you? Well, I think that, uh, it really does come down to the individual. Uh, I will say that ultimately just getting started in this business Having a team or a resource that you can go to, uh, like the Land Geek VAs, to do due diligence or something like that, um, is really going to accelerate your progress. It's going to help you kind of skip over the whole, um, you know, mapping out your system and your process for doing the due diligence because they already know how to do it. And you're just like, you know, hey, here's my property. This is the APN. A few days later, you're going to get a report back with all the pertinent information. Um, I think, you know, I, where it depends on the person is really kind of, it comes down to, at least in my eyes, you know, how customized or how personalized you might want the result to be. Um, you know, if you have certain expectations or certain 
needs for your properties, you know, depending on what service you're working with, they may or may not accommodate you. So, um, you know, maybe you want 15 maps of the property and you want, um, you know, the, the distance from the property to the nearest town and the nearest major city and, and all these other things. And maybe, um, the service that you're working with won't do that for you. Um, or maybe they will, but, at any rate, you're probably going to need to train them to do that in a certain way that you want it done. So, so there is some benefit to having kind of the knowledge of, of being able to train a BA. Um, but, you know, I think the, the biggest difference is between the two options really comes down to um, spending the time. And if, if you need kind of that customized service, spending the time to to build that process and do all the work to create the videos, work with that VA, you're gonna have a lot more, um, let's say interaction and management if you're training your own VA versus using a service. So, you know, as I think about it, those are some of the things that I would say you would have to consider. All right, Zen Master, Mike Zeno, what are your thoughts? So just so I'm clear, we're talking about basically, you know, do I want to use a service or train someone to do that, that job for myself, right? Get my own private. Right. right. Well, I think it may depend on particular, what, what particular aspect of the business. I mean, but really what we are, we're, we're, we're learning here, high level managing a team, right? We're all entrepreneurs. We're learning to, so these are all intricate parts of it, but you know, if, if it's something that can be, um, you know, like a due diligence or something like that, then yeah, I mean, that, I don't have, it's just a tool, right? It's just something that you're gonna use, but if it's interacting, interacting with maybe a client on the buy side or the sell side, so intake manager versus uh, a sales agent, that might be something you might wanna specialize because it might be a certain way you wanna have your uh, people interact like with the people that you're dealing with on the buy and sell side. So, but the other stuff, it's like, yeah, find something that's effective and use it. I mean, you need to understand it. Mark, you always talk about don't abdicate, right? Don't. Don't just hand it off before you understand it. Understand what it's all about. Um, but if it's a tool that works, use it. I mean, at the end of the day, we're looking for a certain set of information on a due diligence report. So if I can give someone uh, like the Land Geek VAs, so the, the county and the APN that comes back to me, that's awesome. It's what you do with it that matters, right? I mean, that, that, so I, I say go for it. That, that's, a, that's a no brainer, if you ask me. That, like The due diligence, like, do you really want to train someone to call and ask a bunch of questions or put it on an Excel sheet? and get some photos or you want to have a team that's in place ready to go that will just crush it for you uh, that, that, that that's not even I, I i wouldn't think about that for a second i'm going with the land geek va's all day long it's what you do with that information after you get it i mean so there it is right in front of you right you have what are you going to do with it now that's important right and what how's your team going to handle that how are you going to interact with the person you're buying from based on that information how are you going to negotiate so I, I think it all depends on the task but overall i think uh you know, some of these services uh, that we offer at the Land Geek, um, I don't know about the other ones and because I don't need to know about them because what I have works. The Land Geek VA team works really well. So I don't need to, you know, you know, kind of uh, play that against another system. So I wouldn't be able to speak with the other one. But uh, I think some things it's definitely worth just going with an, a setup process that works. Here you go. You give them this information. You get back this. Uh, boom. It's a no-brainer, Mark. I go with that type of stuff. I go with it all day long. I think we have a podcast title. It's a no brainer. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, Tate, how about you? You want to play devil's advocate? Sure, sure, sure. I'll play devil's advocate. Um, <laughs> it's going to be hard, but uh, I think I could come up with something. I guess the downside is how do we know this Mark Podolsky guy isn't going to just disappear on us? <laughs> and, uh, we won't have any VAs or you'll have built the land geek team or a, a VA team around a guy who is now uh, in Tahiti drinking Mai Tais all day. You know, how do we know that's not going to happen? Other than that, I mean, the guy's been in business for what, 20 years. I don't think Mark's going anywhere, but um, this is where something like flight school really comes into play because in flight school, you learn how to do this. It's not like, you're going to be left high and dry. If the Land Geek VAs close shop, you still know what to do. You know what to look for. You've seen enough due diligence reports that you can prepare and, and eventually train your own VA. I've done it both ways, right? I've trained people. 
I've taught them exactly what I wanted and it takes a lot of time. And those same people that I've trained are now the ones that are, you know, working with the land geek VAs and they're fantastic and we get nothing but five star reviews from them. But it, it kind of blows my mind when people want to make this business more complicated than it needs to be. Right. And by doing it all on yourself, by not seeking out expert advice, by not getting good training and good fun fundamentals, you're making it harder on yourself for what to save a little bit of money. You can always make more of that. Yeah. But even if I die, which hopefully I won't, but no, even no, I, we, we're prepared for that. people. Yeah. I mean, we're, we are prepared. I mean, we have office in the Philippines. We've got really good internet and I don't even manage it. So no. And, and that's just it. You know, it's not like this is a, uh, this is a, a test drive, right? We're established. We're not going anywhere. Um, as long as I need due diligence reports done, the land geek VAs can't disappear, right? Cause I'm going to keep you busy. So I know Scott's the same way. I know, you know, Zeno and everybody else on this call. It's like, we do enough due diligence report to justify keeping the office open over there. So if you're listening to this podcast, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah. I think we've got 11 or 12 people now. I mean, it's really grown and they're all great. Um, and well-trained and hardworking and experts in their areas. So I don't want to make this a land geek VA sort of commercial, but I, I do think that there is um, a lot to be said about having somebody ready to go and not having to uh, spend the time, which is ultimately money going on to Upwork, creating an ad, you know, creating tests, training, you know, and continually kind of going through that when you have somebody right there. Now, Scott Todd, who never overpays compared to myself, might have a different angle on this as far as is it worth the investment of going through that so that in the long term, ultimately you will be paying less. I do overpay, by the way. I overpay on certain things and I'm just like, ugh. But that said, Mark, I disagree that uh, I, I don't agree with the con, I hear what you're saying. I hear what everybody's saying, I do. But I don't like the concept of uh, leveraging other people's businesses. I don't like that concept. And the, the reason is, is because uh, I don't wanna be dependent on somebody else. I, I wanna build a team that's responsive to me and not to build a team that uh, is reliant on someone else's company. To me, it's, and like, I'm not trying to be offensive when I say this, it's, it could be polarizing, but I think it's the lazy way out. Okay, no problem. It's the easy way out. It's the easy button. Boom. And what I, what I mean by that is you, when, when you don't control the team, you have no leverage. Meaning like, I, I know that there's not too many times where I need something back right now, but man, if I give it to somebody else and they go and they, they do the due diligence, well, I'm at their beck and call. I can't say, hey, priority, I need this one back now. So now I can't control it. I can only react to what they can, can, can do. I can't tell them this is the way that I want to operate. They, they can try to. But then when you're working with an agency that's doing all this stuff, you're never going to get the same person. There's no guarantee you're going to have the same person. And when you don't have the same person, it's always going to be done differently. That said – you know, I want to, I want to be able to control the process. I want to be able to control the, the thing. Now I don't, you don't need to go through and create all these tests. I, I teach them in flight school. I tell you about teaching these tests. Well, guess what? You've already done the work. Most likely you've already done a due diligence package. Give them what you have here. Go do due diligence on this particular property. You don't need to create a formal test. Just give them, Hey, here's a property. Go do, here's a list, go scrub. And you know the results because you did it. And it really isn't that complicated. What, what does become complicated a little bit is the time investment. I'm going to spend some time to go do the, you know, to, to train these people to do it the way that I want it done. But if you don't really care how it's done and you don't really care about controlling that component of the process, you can take the easy button way out. But I don't want to build my business on somebody else. Yeah, I think that has a lot of value, what you just said. Bearline Aaron. What are your final thoughts on this? 
Yeah, I agree. I think it depends on where you're at and what your goal is. Um, I agree with a lot of what everybody said, including Scott. Um, I'm a person that likes to control my process. Um, the way I've done some things, when I had to do them myself, now there's kind of systems maybe built around that. So I need somebody to fit my system, not me fit theirs. On the other hand, uh, there is that convenience aspect where, you know, especially if you're getting up and going and, you know, you need a, to start doing a lot of work without putting in a lot of work, then the services are pretty handy, you know, and they're already trained and ready to go. Um, and honestly, I don't see really why you couldn't do both as well. Um, due diligence, for instance, um, you might have a due diligence VA that really knows you and, and works with you how you want, like Scott was talking, but then, you know, you come across a group of properties and all of a sudden you have to do, you know, 20 or 30, maybe you're doing a big bulk deal and um, that's going to really bog down your one or two people. Uh, you might need to go to a service and say, hey, we need to you know, I need you to do 20 of these and, you know, you can have your people do 10 of them. And, um, you know, it gives you a way to also cross check results and that sort of thing to make sure everybody's, you know, everything looks good. But um, it, it seems that there's definitely a place for both ways. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's really the, the right answer. And Eric, you know, so eloquently stated that it really just depends on you. So are you a complete total, you know, insane control freak like Scott Todd? Or are you a reasonable person that looks at their business and really wants to just focus on the things that are really going to move the needle in their business long term, which is ultimately, you know, making money on sales. It just depends on you. I don't think there's a wrong answer. Um, you know, in the same I'm not sense, a control freak. I'm not a control freak. I mean, let's just say, let, let, like, let's just say, for example, you're a plumber, right? Whose house would you rather go to? Mine, where I let you do your work because I know you're an expert at it. And you've got years of experience. Or Scott's, where he's hovering over your shoulder saying, no, that probably isn't right. You know, we're going to need a ball bearing for this and, you know, this or that. And ultimately, I can't see. done a certain wait, way. Wait, 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 wait. I can totally wait, see wait, Scott wait, being wait, very wait. hoverish, right? Like, oh, just like, what are you doing? No. Yeah, especially no. now that he's got passive income, you know he's like the plumber comes over and his wife's like, "What are you doing today?" He's like, "Oh, I'm hanging out with the plumber. I'm working, observing." Well, you guys need, might need to wrap up this podcast because the pool guy is coming to clean here shortly, and I got to go out there and supervise him. But <laughs> you just want to make sure he's skimming the right way. Listen, that said, Mark, I have a question for you. What type of plumbing job do you know of where they use ball bearings? I'm confused. <laughs> okay. That's very true. It's because he doesn't watch over their shoulder. He doesn't know. watch. Over I don't know. You know, I, is there someone in the audience who can tell us for sure if there's any type of plumbing parts that have ball bearings in them? I mean, I think the ball toilet motors. is a simple concept. No ball bearings required. I, have you lubricated the ball bearings in your toilet lately? Oh wow! This has gone up. This has gone this is, a different direction real quick. I thought we were talking about VAs, but you, you know what? Ultimately, though, but I, I think the the real answer though is that you're not doing it yourself, right? Because you really have the cognizance that hey, this is not an activity that I should personally be doing because it, it's it's a three to six dollar an hour uh, task. Right. So I think back to Bearlands, you know, final answer, you can do both ultimately. And um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the, it was a ball valve. That's right. That's what I meant. Not a ball bearing ball valve. It's a valve. And uh, what is that? What is the ball valve? It's a, you know, no, 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 your name's not Mark. Your name's not Mark. Oh, Mark. Oh, okay. We'll let Mark answer it. I'm a trifle deaf in my left ear. I want to okay. thank the listeners, by the way. And, um, you know, I just want to remind them, share the podcast. And, uh, 
you know, certainly don't feel badly about yourself if you are using the Land Geek VAs. It's it's not being lazy. It's it's ultimately being, <laughs> being smart. It's better than doing or, nothing. Or yeah, or it's better than <laughs> it nothing. Absolutely, is better than you owning it, right? But like, I don't know. I like to build a team. No, I and I and I agree. I mean, look, um, you know, we did our own proprietary software program. We could have done three different services patched together and built it on someone else's, you know, land, so to speak, and be completely dependent, to Scott's point, on those three services. Not a great long-term business strategy. Same thing with uh, GeekPay, right? That being said, I think in the beginning, nothing wrong with it as your business. But ultimately, I think Scott's right. I think the long-term best investment is don't build your business on somebody else's land so to speak, right? Um, who's got the tip of the week this week? Do I have the tip of the week? Yeah, yeah. I think, yep, I think I'm, I, what's my tip? I'll tell you my tip. It's a no-brainer tip. <laughs> it's a book I just read uh, titled Atomic Habits by, did I talk about this as a tip? If I haven't, I should have. Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, tiny changes, remarkable results, um, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. Uh, it's, a really, it's a really great book. Um, check that one out. That is my tip of the week. So uh, hopefully everyone's getting value from the Roundtable podcast. Again, please share this with a friend, subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Again, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School Live. Coming up May 17th, 18th, and 19th. Start getting your business really launched in three days. Learn more, uh, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. All right, are we ready to do this? Let's go, Mark. One two, three, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. That we need to outsource. <laughs> I, I, I'd actually prefer a British voice. Let <laughs> freedom ring. Kind of, no, that's terrible. I mean. I just can, lost all our British listeners. Can you, wait, are, are they still upset because we did let freedom ring? Like America, I don't know. Uh oh, oh, we still oh. recording. <laughs> We're still recording. <laughs> that, that, that. I'm a huge Hamilton fan, by the way. You're a huge what? Hamilton fan. Yeah, the musical. Yeah. yeah. Only Scott yeah. Todd could antagonize the Brits. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do have to laugh. Like I saw, I saw a, a thing the other day that said. Um, What's her name? Princess Megan or whatever, you know, American in the, in, in the uh, royal family. We're, wi we're winning. I don't know. You know, you know, no show. Uh, I started watching on Netflix. It was very well done. I didn't think I would like it because my wife's like, let's watch this together. I'm like, well, really? Okay. No one's getting killed or, you know, kidnapped or anything like that. She's like, no, it's just good. The crown. Is really good. Crown. Cool. Yeah. But my wife and I, we were cruising through Netflix the other day, and I just, she's like, I can't find anything here. She gives me the remote. I just like go over like two notches. I'm just like, boom, start playing. And I noticed, I took the Tate Litchfield rule. Um, how many episodes and how many seasons? And there was five episodes and two seasons. And it was five and five. And I'm like, Beautiful. I'm only committed now for 10 hours. Let's go. Let's roll. And you know what? It was really, it was a really good show, Mark. And we got to the end and we we're like, uh, is there a third one coming out? What, what, what? It's been a while. I forgot what it was called. It was, um, it was an English show that was really good. Yeah. I mean, the, the wisdom of Tate Litchfield is, is really, Amazing. I mean, just throw that gems. This is, this is why boot camp is so special. Is that that networking break? You can just ask Tate, like, what are your rules for life again? And he'll tell you. Yeah, I'll give you the commandments. The yeah. Tate Litchfield commandments. 
The Taylor you know, Swift commandments. Net, Netflix series need to be two seasons or less, right? That's a good one. You know, um, Donuts know. daily. Yeah, yeah. Ride your bike every day. You know, there's all kinds of things. Donuts I'm, on a daily basis. Stick to the food group, right? Bikes and donuts. I don't know. Food group one. Yeah, just food group. Well, if you get some that have like fillings, right? You can get, you know. Your fruit. Yeah. <laughs> and dairy. I think I, yeah. Is, is any of this discussed in lots? Or is that on the, the second season? That might be second season. Depending on how lots season one goes over with everybody, and it's now available, actually. Um, hey, where, do you, where do you access lots? What is it, Mark? It's, is it uh, thelandgeek.com forward slash lots? Yeah, thelandgeek.com forward slash lots. Um, you know, depending on the feedback we get, uh, production quality will go up and we'll be able to do some more fun stuff in episode or season two. So, you know, I broke my own rule though on season two or season one, because it is nine episodes, but they're, they're only 20 minute episodes. So I think Scott will probably watch it. I don't know. <laughs> By the way, if you, if you heard that in the background, Scott Bossman has not been viciously attacked. Um, he's I think, still- I think- that's like uh, Scott Blossom's got the dog, the dog house, like Arsenio Hall. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's yeah. rude and state. That, that dog got real excited about lots. Yeah. He's like, what's that link again? Thelandgeek.com forward slash lots. That one? I think so. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Tate, so, the- so welcome back. Right, like because you weren't back last week, you were you were fishing. Mm-hmm. How how was the cheesecake factory down there? <laughs> <laughs> there was no cheesecake. I mean, Scott, you might as well have considered this a camping trip. It was like a couple days before we left, we got an email from our from our liaison over there, and they're like, "Yeah, the supply ship is like six months late." So. You need to bring some food with you. It's like, wait, wait a second. There's no food, and they're like, "Well, there's plenty of rice and uh, fish, but if you don't like rice and fish, bring some beef jerky and some granola and those kind of things." So, every meal of every day, we ate rice and fish. So I loved it. It was good. Fresh tuna, you know, hard to beat that. But uh, it was a great trip. Tons of fish. Good times. You know, good company was fun. Living the dream. Trying. Trying. What it's was the name of the island? It's called, uh, it's called Christmas Island, but uh, it's in the nation of Kiribati. Kiribati is what it is. So you go to Honolulu and then fly directly south, 15 or 1,600 miles, and uh, then you'll hit it. It's right there in the Line Islands, so. Yeah, cool. Scott, did Tate tell you the story about how he was almost stuck there for another week? No. Oh, I didn't tell you this? This no. is crazy. So there's only one flight a week there. And you're in a tropical place, so there's storms and it rains all the time. And we were flying out on Wednesday of last week. And then you'd cross the international date line. And so you land in Hawaii on Tuesday. So it's really confusing. But Wednesday morning, we got up. And it was the craziest rain and thunder storm, tropical storm I've ever seen. And we get to the airport, we check in and, uh, you know, we're just kind of hanging around. Our flight leaves at 730, six o'clock comes on, no plane, no announcements. Okay. 6.45, no plane, no announcements, 7.15, no plane, no announcements, 7.30 comes on, and they're like, hey, the plane is in the air, it's circling Christmas Island, um, but due to the weather, it can't land right now. We'll be back to you in just a little bit. 15 minutes later, they come back on, they're like, yeah, so they still can't land, and if the plane can't land, your, pl- your flight will be canceled and you'll be rebooked for next Wednesday. And it's like, <laughs> wait, did you just say like 
seven <laughs> days from now. Like, I want to go home. I'm ready. And so they, everybody starts getting all worked up and um, they got on the intercom again. And they're like, the captain says he's going to go for it. He's going to land. We're like, great. Everybody starts uh, cheering. The plane lands, landed on like one wheel, did like a wheelie for, I don't know, 100 feet or something like that. And they land and they get on the intercom and say, all right, everybody get on the plane as fast as you can. They don't have a ton of fuel left. So we need to take off in the next 25 minutes. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> They're just letting us on the plane. They're not scanning boarding pass. They're not checking IDs. They just put us on the airplane. They didn't, t they just said, sit down wherever you can. We got on the plane within like, I don't know, 10 minutes. We're taxiing down the runway. It's crazy lightning, rain. You can't even see out the window. And uh, the pilot punches it. We take off really rough. We get up to 40,000 feet, sunny, bright. He gets on. He says, all right, thank you guys for cooperating. We're assuming everybody who needed to be on this flight's on it. Um, <laughs> You know, take your seat, relax. Uh, based on our estimations, we should have just enough fuel to get to Honolulu. And it's like, just enough? Wait, just this enough. is not a, this is not a like place. A TV TV commercial. <laughs> there, there's just no, enough. There is nowhere to land in between Christmas Island and Honolulu if you run out of gas. Like, there's no emergency landings. So oh, You can land in the water. I I've guess. seen it done. You've seen it done? Oh, yeah. Man, well. The Miracle on the Hudson, he did it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's just say this little Air Fiji flight was, uh, it was not going to make it on the water. Like there's no way that thing would have held together. Um, but we land, or it was funny. He's like, based on our estimations, we should have enough fuel to get to Honolulu. So get back, sit back, relax and uh, have a good sleep. Like nobody's <laughs> sleeping on that flight after you say that. How do you keep an entire flight up? Tell them you all, you think you have enough fuel to get there. But uh, it was crazy. <laughs> so I almost didn't make it out of there, and I would have, you know, had to stay an extra week, which I can think of worse things, but I was ready. And yeah. my dad was in panic mode. He's like, uh, I've got clinic tomorrow. I have to get home. How, how, uh, how would your wife have handled that? Like, honey, I'm stuck here for another week. Sorry. Well, I wouldn't have been able to call her. I oh, mean, just never showed up. Yeah, well, I just never go over great. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't have been able to call her. They had like some crazy expensive Wi-Fi out there, but um, I would have messaged her and just been like, "Uh, Christmas Island has me. I'm lost. They took me. I can't get home." But I was. <laughs> I told her when we landed in Hawaii, and she's like, "I would not have been okay with that. You would have had to find a way out of there." It's like. <laughs> There's literally no way to get off this island. What am I doing? Rowing a boat? Yeah. It's not like you can get a private jet to come pick you up either. It's like one flight once a week. That's it. They call me. I would have gotten you. Yeah. I mean, I think the moral of the story for me is I have now a reverse bucket list of things I never want to do. Number one, fish with Tate in Christmas Island and risk my life. That's, that's like on the top of the- Hold plane. on, Mark. Before you say that, let me just, let me just share a photo with everybody and, and you tell me if it's, you wouldn't want to do this. Hold on. Eric just sent a picture in the, in the chat. It looks really cool. No, I, I'd, I'd want to do it. I just want to survive. Yeah, yeah I mean, I did have, uh, after we took off, I realized I had um, uh, emergency evacuation insurance, but- I don't know. That sounds kind of expensive to uh, turn on. So I probably just would have had to stay an extra week. That's all. So I just yeah. sent you a picture. Bearland Aaron's running the podcast. He's like, uh, Tate and Mark are stuck in Christmas Island another week due to inclement weather. <laughs> and Scott's flying out to go get them. So oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did read a, uh, I read, I read a um, uh, flight accident report about like, um, so, so like a plane that I could fly, like, I'm not talking about like a, some big commercial jet. I'm just talking about some plane, you know, like a private plane, right? It crashed. Like they had to make an emergency landing in the middle, 
of like the Pacific Ocean because the pilot had decided he was going to fly from LA to Honolulu. Like, what are you thinking, man? Like, seriously, come on, get on a get on a real plane and fly that thing. I wouldn't do it. I mean, I've spent some time now in the Pacific area, like on these islands fishing, and it is remote. Like, you're out there, man. I can't imagine going down out there. You, I mean, you could see how these big planes just disappear because there's so much water out there. I don't know. Not yeah, those pictures are, are gorgeous. Pictures are incredible, man. Yeah. I it's, take it back. It's, it's, it's back on the bucket list. Mark, I mean, dude, it was, we should have a boot camp there. <laughs> Rustic boot camp. It'd be a week long. A week long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe <Rusty>. two. <laughs> yeah. Bring plan on food. one. Or book for one, plan on two kind of thing. Just, just bring – they got plenty of rice. You just got to bring whatever else you want to eat. Yeah, Scott, you would have hated it. I, I feel Look, like we have – If you were on a deserted island, <laughs> what would you take to eat? That's a good question, Mark. Question. Beef jerky. Beef jerky. Cheesecake factory? Cheesecake yeah. factory. I'd just Uber. I'd Uber <laughs> eat it. <laughs> I'd take my phone. I think, by the way, they, they probably have a cheesecake factory in Honolulu. So you did go through Honolulu, right? What we could do is better yet do this. <laughs> have a... Uh, we could have a boot camp in Honolulu, and then we could go fishing. See, we, that's we, the module for when you have financial freedom and the time, what do you do with it? Yeah, we could, we could do like land geek adventures. You know, fly with Scott, fish with Tate, you know. Jam with Eric. Go, jam with <laughs> Eric, go in the dojo the with Ty. You know, ride a motorcycle with Bearland Aaron. Survive Wisconsin with Scott Bossman in the winter. Put on a fire with Zeno. But, yeah, exactly. Just but have dinner at the firehouse with Zeno. Have the, Mike, can you get the can, – Mike, can you get the uh, – like a, maybe we should do a boot camp or something up near you. <laughs> you get the fire truck out there, and we have like, you know, like wet and wild days, man. Like, you know, like we have the – you let the hose go, and it's, you got to work together as a team to go out there, climb out there, and control the hose. Like <laughs> – work and everything through the land geek adventures could work could work <laughs> have you ever done that mark have you ever like like wrestled a fire hose i don't even know what a ball bearing is <laughs> okay so <laughs> i did that like i went to this competition like i was on like on a team and like you the the hose was loose right like it was loose and so you had to like go to the like the base like where it, it starts and you had to crawl out there. Zeno knows what I'm talking about. You know, we're, we're kind of honorary firemen here. I had to crawl out there. Me and my team had to crawl out there. And you had to, like, control the – like, capture the hose. Because remember, it's, like, going like crazy like this, right? So, like, we're crawling out there. I, and I'm, like, leading the way, Mark. I get to the end. And, the, and we're wearing the helmets and the mask and everything. I get to the end. I go to grab the, the nozzle. I grab it. But when I did, it, like, shot back on me. And all the water goes up into my helmet. It's like drowning me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm out. Somebody else get it. Oh, man, <laughs> hard to do. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to say from that. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm running to Whole Foods. I'm making a salad. Just a salad. I got to be healthy for boot camp. So see you guys. <sighs> see ya. Bye. See ya.